Hi friends, I am Ms. Cherry with Ventura County Library. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to be doing a pumpkin dissection. So we're going to be taking a look at the pumpkin from the outside in. And if you have two different types of pumpkins, uh, this is really cool to do a comparison between the two and see how similar they are and how different they are. But you can also do this with just one pumpkin. So you're going to need at least one pumpkin. Uh, it's good to have some uh, newspaper that you can spread out so if you make a mess you can easily clean it up. A tray uh, to put your pumpkin on and maybe a bowl for the insides are also going to be useful. It's also good to have a observation journal and uh, something to write with as well so you can write down your findings. Um, and they're also going to need a knife, but for this part, you're definitely going to need a grown-up. So a serrated knife and a grown-up um, will be needed for when we explore the interior of our pumpkins. So let's start by just taking a look at the outside of the pumpkin. And we're going to explore with all of our senses. We're going to use our hearing and our sight and our smell, maybe even our taste. And definitely touch. So we're gonna start with this little tiny pumpkin See, Let's see there. What are the parts of the outside of the pumpkin? There are, hmm, let's feel here. You can see at the bottom something really different. Let's check this one too. Look, they both have that similar spot on the bottom. That is the flower blossom end. So the, where the flower grows on the pumpkin where it was attached to the pumpkin as it started growing. Another part of the outside, let's see, let's feel these where the indents are around the pumpkin. Those are the ribs. And the ribs on this little pumpkin are really high. They've got some deep grooves in there. This one here is a little bit smoother. What else? What are the other parts of our pumpkin? Of course, the stem, we've got a much shorter and wider stem on this bigger pumpkin, and just a little tiny hook stem on my little pumpkin. Uh, we also, this whole outside piece is the shell, and of course the shell is much smaller than the one I have here with my larger pumpkin, and the skin. So if, we, if these were still in the pumpkin patch, still attached to the vine, they would also have the tendril and leaf part attached to the pumpkin. So those are the basics of the outside of the pumpkin. Let's take a look. If we looked at the color, our colors are different here, right? Pumpkins can come in a lot of different colors. They're usually orange. That's the best, the most well-known color for the pumpkins. But when they start growing first, they can be green and different varieties come in different colors. This one here is like a lighter yellowish orange with darker orange stripes. But this one here is pretty much all orange. What else do we see? The smell? I don't smell much right now. Let me try this one. Hmm. No, not too much. Doesn't smell too much when the shell is intact. Let's see. Should we taste it? Only if your pumpkin's clean. You can taste the outside. Just give it a little lick. Nope. Doesn't taste like much. What about this one? Let's see. Nope. What about hearing? Let's see. It's a good sound. Let's try this one. It's much duller. This one has a, a much clearer sound coming out of it. I wonder why that is. What do you think that might be? Hmm. Before we cut into our pumpkin, let's think about what do we think is going to be on the inside. Are these two pumpkins going to be the same, or do you think they'll be different, or they'll have some similarities and some differences, like the outsides? And also, depending on what size your pumpkins are, let's take a guess at how many seeds that you think are inside. So what I'm going to say in this one, I'm going to say 12 seeds, and this one I'm going to say 37. So 12 and 37, make your guesses for your pumpkins, and then get your grown-up with a knife to cut them open for you. So I'm just going to slice them right in half. And 
right into the pumpkin. If you can avoid the stem, it will be easier to cut through. My stem is giving me some trouble, doesn't it? I'm gonna cut through the stem. Oh, there we go. Wow. I very much underestimated the amount of seeds that would be in just this tiny pumpkin. There are so many seeds in there. I'm not going to count them all, but you can count the seeds of your pumpkin and see how many are inside. There's way more than I could say 12. There's way more than 12 in here. What are the other parts? There's the seeds, of course, we just talked about. And then these little like hairy pieces, those are the fibrous strands. What else is in here? We have the pulp. That's this fleshy piece around the inside of the shell. And that's pretty much it. Those are the basics of the inside of the pumpkin. Um, if we have a larger baking pumpkin, this is the part where we make pies, right? But these seeds are also good for either planting and baking more pumpkins, or we can roast them in the oven. So let's take a look. We take we took a look. Let's feel. It's a little gooey. Yeah. Smell. Much more of a pumpkin -y smell now that we've cut it open and can get to the flesh of the pumpkin. And let's take a look at this big one. I'm gonna avoid cutting on the um, stem because that's the hardest part to cut. So I'm gonna cut over to the side instead of directly down the middle of the pumpkin. Let's see. Much harder to cut. That's the first thing I notice. Oops, there we go. Wow. Now, did I say 37? Again, I underestimated. There are way more than 37 seeds in here. So you can, if you have two pumpkins, count all your seeds and compare your pumpkins. See which one had the most seeds and how closely your predictions were. How close your prediction was. So you can see the fibrous strands a lot better in this big pumpkin and it has a lot more flesh. Look at that. It's nice and smooth and smell it. Mm, it's a nice pumpkin-y smell. So the insides of our pumpkin were pretty much the same. Our outsides were pretty different but they had all the same parts. But like the like the outside, this one is much more orange and this one is much more yellow. And let's see, are there any other differences or similarities? They both have seeds, they both have fiber strands, and they both have that pulp inside the flesh. Let's see, in our story today, they used pumpkins for all kinds of different things when they were trying to figure out what a pumpkin was used, what a pumpkin was, and what it could be used for. They think they um, use it as a table, as a doorstop. Sometimes we can take everyday objects and turn them into other things. We use them for different uses than they were intended. You could also write down, what do you think you could use your pumpkin for other than just a pumpkin? Your decoration, a doll, and of course we usually make jack-o'-lanterns around this time of year and coming up on Thanksgiving we make pumpkin pies. But just get creative and think of all the different ways that you could use a pumpkin. Compare your pumpkin shapes and sizes. And that's it, my friends. Enjoy the pumpkin season and let's be sure to take time to be grateful for all of the wonderful things in our life, including the fabulous pumpkin. <laughs> all right, friends. Thank you for joining me today for this pumpkin dissection, and I'll see you next time.